Hello, my name is Stefan Stab. I'm from University of Koblenz, London, Germany. I'm also Chair for Web and Computer Science at the University of Southampton, UK. Before I talk, I cannot be with you today because I filed a visa waiver application, ESTA, and that was declined because I gave a conference keynote in Iran two years ago. I had enjoyed visa waiver free access to the United States for more than 20 visits over the last 20 years, actually ever since I finished my Master of Science studies at University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia in 94. Uh, this, was, this has taken me by quite some surprise and notice came too short in time for me to file a successful visum application. So, on with my talk. Everyone knows what big data is, but what is broad big data? Well, big data is characterized by the five V's. Volume measured in terabytes or petabytes that you have to manage, velocity, a huge amount of data arriving in a very short time span, maybe some gigabytes of data per second. A huge variety, so your data might include dozens or even hundreds of formats, whether that would be PDFs or images or raw CSV data. Um, veracity, not sure how to measure that, but ultimately you want to derive value from all this volume, velocity, variety and veracity, which you could measure in dollars or euros. When I try to explain broad data, I have to talk about concepts. What is a concept? A concept is an abstract idea that arises as an abstraction from experience. The concept is instantiated by actual instances representing things in the real world. That's what Wikipedia states. On the right you see an example. You have different kind of trees occurring in the real world and you abstract into the concept of a tree and you define how to represent all these instances in your system. Now, where do concepts occur in traditional information systems? In ER modeling, you would talk about entity types. In relational databases, you might talk about tables, and sometimes a table would correspond to a concept. Sometimes an individual column would correspond to an, uh, the instantiation of, of a concept. Then you would have classes in object-oriented programming, would, would, which would correspond very well to concepts. In graph databases, you might have summarizing nodes that in, are instantiated by other nodes. And in ontologies, you refer to concept or concept name if you are very precise. Now, in traditional information systems, you typically deal with thousands of concepts. SAP R3, for example, has been estimated to deal with 10,000 to 20,000 concepts to represent what is important to core processes of a company. But the thing about broad data is that it may have to deal with a million concepts. And we see systems nowadays that have to deal with this amount of concepts, whether they occur in the forms of entity types, of OO classes, or tables and columns. And not only concepts, but also properties. You might have a relationship type in ER modeling. You might have um, tables. A table could represent a property or a foreign key relationship might represent a property in a relational database. You have methods in OO programming or you have edge types in graph databases. And in ontologies, you talk about properties, relations and roles. Like with concepts, the number of properties that you really have to deal with is much larger in broad data. You may easily end up with 1,000 or 10,000 properties. And there is a lot of broad data in the wild and it's growing. We have Wikidata as a sister project to Wikipedia. And the idea was that Wikipedia has a lot of facts, for example, how many people live in Atlanta, and they should appear in all the different language versions as the same number, which is difficult if all that you have is text which is easy when some of what you have are queries to an underlying database asking for the population of Atlanta. 
in all the different big companies, you now have knowledge graphs, whether you talk about Google, Microsoft, Springer, uh, BBC, New York Times, uh, Samsung, and so on and so forth. And these, Google, uh, these knowledge graphs power the searches, they power uh, the data organization. And in the future, I think they will power the big data systems if they not already use them. Then there is linked open data. I will talk a bit about that in one of the following slides. And in the medical field, you have unified medical language system, which organizes data into more than a million concepts, from anatomy to symptoms and diseases and treatments, covering almost anything that we know about the human body. And when you go to large companies and you find 5,000 databases there and you multiply each of that by some dozens, hundreds or thousands of concepts, you end up with hundreds of thousands of concepts in a large company, treated by this large company. And that has to be taken care of. Here in the paper I've provided a summarizing uh, table. It's not always very easy to find good numbers. Here are some numbers you see that some of them don't have big data. When we talk about Wikidata, it has 125 million statements. Even if you normalize that, it will probably still be below 1 billion statements, but having some additional provenance knowledge. But it's represented, or it's representing over a million concepts and over 3,000 properties. And uh, when you go to schema.org, uh, as it is collected from the web by Google, then we talk about at least 75,000 concepts. These are only the part that's represented by good relations and more than 5,000 properties. And there are trillions of triples that fall under these numbers of concepts and properties. So broad big data may have all the characteristics of big data, but it also represents millions of concepts and thousands of properties between instances of these concepts and leads to challenges which are not sufficiently tackled by current big data systems. What are these challenges? For one, there are novel data distributions. There are all kinds of imbalances. You have to balance where to store these different concepts with their instantiations. And what easily happens is that some concepts and in their instances are more important than others so you might easily end up in a distributed system with a heavy workload imbalance. Quite often this is due to a different imbal to, 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 due to an imbalance in degree. For example, some instances of concepts might have many relationships, many properties with neighboring instances, and others might be rather on their own. And of course, in a large distributed system, you might have to locate all these concepts even under heavy churn and heavy addition of new instances and new concepts. At Wikidata, every time I look there, there are a couple of hundred concepts more than there were uh, in the month before. And then there's also the problem of programming with these abundance of concepts that has to do with the huge data heterogeneity. How do you keep them aligned? How do you find alliances? How do you provide some data that or is it some code that's actually maintainable and gives you the correct results? And how do you trace who has the authority, who has the provenance of the data that you handle there? Let me briefly talk about linked open data, which of course is the, the uh, favorite subject of, of people in the semantic web. Each dots here in this diagram represents a data source. Some data sources have dozens of concepts, others have millions of concepts. DBP there, for example, is an automatically extracted representation um, of facts derived from Wikipedia. So there are many concepts in there and even many more instances. And there you can also view the uh, degree imbalance. DBpedia attracts a lot of links that constitute relationships to many other places. That's not true for all the other domains and not true for all the other data sources. And the colors here actually indicate the domains. So you have life sciences as a very important and densely connected domain in red. You have e-government as a very important domain in yellow. 
you have a lot of linguistics and media resources and you have many publications whether that's ACM or DBLP and of course there are some cross-domain representations like DBpedia that um, are linked to many of them. We have tried to optimize some operations on this linked open data cloud and um, we have started with a, a common representation mechanism representing linked open data as graphs and each individual edge represents a triple of a subject, a predicate and an object and a common hypothesis for joint processing is that if you minimize the cuts of these edges then you might uh, result in optimal joint processing uh, because then you can leave a lot of joint processing on individual compute nodes and each color in this diagram indicates on which compute node a particular triple was put and of course that's a heavily filtered version because it represents only a couple of hundreds or a couple of thousands of triples. Now it's not so simple then because what you also observe is that for example the green compute node has corresponding triples that are heavily connected while on the blue compute node you might have many triples that are less connected so the green one might attract more joint processing operations than the blue one. So what we found then in average clustering by a simple hashing algorithm works actually better than computationally intensive uh, cut minimizing clustering algorithms. And the reason is really that <clears throat> the um, minimizations of cuts puts very many join occasions together leading to a heavy workload imbalance. And again that's I would as, as, sub, ascribe that also to um, the broad data aspects. We have also analyzed the occurrence of, of properties here again on a sample and you see we talk here about uh, some thousands of properties and you see there are uh, some few properties which occur really hundreds of thousands of times in this small data sample and the majority of properties um, occur only like five or ten times. So we see from this example result the combination also of properties, which properties co-occur which with other properties is not random but neither is it actually very easily to decipher and when you ask where do you find properties and where do you find join occasions for property combinations you have to come up with new means to do so. So let me conclude. I hope I could convince you that there are a lot of opportunities where broad data may arise and it arises more so every day. Many of them are also big data systems that have many concepts that are represented in there and many properties that we have to deal with. And this unusual distribution of concepts and properties gives rise to novel challenges for distributed data systems and their programming. Thank you very much.